Amen. It is Bible study time again. Amen. Amen. I ask that you all please join me in prayer as I reverence our Heavenly Father, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for traveling grace allowing us to make it out tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for, for just being who you are in our lives. We thank you that you have made us, Lord God, the head and not the tail. We thank you, Father God, for your traveling grace and mercies. We thank you, Lord God, that tonight we will learn more of you, Heavenly Father, and just learn how to love you even more, Lord God. Father, we thank you. I decrease as you increase, Lord God. We thank you that the airways are made clear. For those that are online at home can, can feel your presence, Lord God, can hear your word and uh, learn more of you, to learn to love you even more, Lord God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that those that are local can start coming out, Heavenly Father, to join into this corporate anointing, Heavenly Father. Lord, we say we love you, we praise you, we magnify you in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. So, Bible study for this month has been titled, Make it a Conscious Decision. Amen. That was our beginning stages and we talked about making a conscious decision to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. And today we're going to talk about making a conscious decision to speak the word of God. Amen. And, you know, it's, it's so important that we know the Word of God in order for us to speak the Word of God. You know, you cannot speak what you don't know. You know, it's funny how um, me and my brothers were together last night in a meeting and we talked about, you know, how computers are, is that piece of equipment. And, you know, um, we are somewhat similar, you know. What's in you comes out of you. Just like a computer, junk in, junk out. You know, uh, when you put new information in, you got new information going out. So that's the same way we work as a people. And so we want to be able to speak what is right, what is good, what is pleasing, what is pleasant, what is you know really uh, uplifting, encouraging, and uh, helpful. Amen. Helpful to others, edifying. You know, so. The word of God is an edifying word. Amen? The word of God is all those things that I spoke. The word of God is. It's encouraging, uplifting, loving, caring, kind, gentle, meek. You know, all these things the word of God is. A lot of people are still in what I say the OT, the Old Testament, speaking the law. But we have, I have to tell you, especially those that are online, um, we hear, all of us are here, so we know, we get it, time and time again, that this new covenant that we're under, and it's called grace, we're not under the law. We're not under the covenant of Moses' law. Amen? We're under the covenant of grace, which is love, through Christ Jesus. You know, there's nothing greater that could have been given to us than the love of God through grace. Amen. There's nothing greater than his love. Amen. 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 And he shows us this by giving us grace. A lot of people don't understand what grace is. Grace is something that you didn't earn. You didn't earn grace. It was freely given from the love of God. He gave his only begotten son that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He gave his only begotten son, he gave it up for the whole world. So whosoever will receive Jesus, receives grace. Amen? Whosoever will receive Jesus, receives grace. If you don't receive Jesus, I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're lost. You are lost. So when I say confident, being confident, uh, I'm sorry, making a conscious decision to speak the word of God, that means that you have taken interest in the word of God. You've taken interest in developing and building a relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is how you'll be able to Speak his word. Mm -hmm. Present his word to others. 
help others by speaking the word of God. And I pray that we don't just speak the word, but we believe what we're speaking. Amen? Because I see right now a whole lot of people are preaching the word, but they're not teaching the word. Amen? I see you, Elder. See, there's a difference between just preaching at somebody and teaching someone. Go ahead, Elder. Amen. I, uh, I was listening to what you're saying when you're somebody making a conscious decision to speak the word, to speak God's word, and you're somebody uh, you're interested. I want to take it a step further uh, because when you actually start to speak the word of God, speak to God's word, you're committed. Amen. You're committed. Because we've given that analogy before. When you're interested, that's when you do it for a little while and then you quit. But when you're committed, then you made that conscious decision that, hey, this is, I'm going to speak what God speaks. I'm going to speak this word. I'm not going to speak law. I'm not going to speak religion. I'm not going to speak the problem. I'm going to speak the victory. Amen. And, and you commit. Amen. Amen. That's very good, Elder. You know, and that is a, a great thing to do is to be committed to speaking the word of God. Amen. It will help you as well as others. When you make a commitment to speak God's word, when you make a commitment to study God's word, when you make a commitment to live God's word, you know, it, it is such a wonderful thing. I mean, where your days will change. Your days will change. There's times where we have dark and gloomy days. But when you can speak God's word into to your life or someone else's life, it seems like the darkness just fades away. Because see, the darkness can't be where light is. Mm -hmm. And when you're speaking God's word, you're shedding light on the situation. Amen? You're shedding light to the situation. Did you have your hand up? Hey, no, no, you're good. Come on. This is really good. You know, you're talking about making a conscious uh, decision. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you, when we accept our Lord, our Heavenly Father as our Savior, that's a constant decision. Amen. And, you know, I was talking to a loved one today and, you know, and talking about faith and everything. And, you know, I was telling them, you know, once upon a time when my faith was like this, but my faith was up here, and how I used to tell my husband, I said, you know, I used to, I used to tell him, so what you going to do? But I don't do that no more because I have made that conscious decision to trust and believe in God. And my faith grows every day. Each and every day it goes stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger because my expectation, of course, I have to do my part. Amen. Amen. You're exactly right. You know, um, there has to be some action as well. Right. You know, when we speak to people, yeah, people can hear you. They can hear what you're saying. But if you're doing something contrary to what you're speaking, you're speaking a whole different language. And that's confusing to people. You know, that, that if someone is new to Christ, and here you are supposed to be seasoned, and you're trying to tell them something about Christ, but yet you're doing the opposite of what you're saying to them. What do you think is happening here? You're confusing that young person. You know, they're just a baby in Christ. And you're sitting here, you're preaching, and you're breathing down their neck, fire and brimstone. That ain't the word of God, first of all. Not in the New Testament. Amen? But what you want to do is show them love even while you're spreading love through the word of God. People can receive your words better and they'll receive them in love more than they would if you're just preaching at them. I remember as a kid, I was kind of afraid to go to church sometimes because, I mean, and when I say a kid, I'm talking about I was, I was coming to my teenage years, 14, 15. And I sure did. I sure did. I thought I was going to hit straight to hell with gasoline draws on. <laughs> I'm serious. 
Because that's the way they made it sound. Wasn't nothing loving about that. But see, today, we have to understand that the covenant of grace is all about love. Mm -hmm. And this is what we want to speak to people. Because this is what's going to draw them to Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible says, through loving kindness have I drawn thee. This is how Jesus draws us. Loving kindness. You know, speaking God's word in Proverbs 16 and 24. I'm going to read that in NLT. You can get it if you want. That's uh, Proverbs 16 and 24. The NLT. Say amen when you get there. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. 16 and 24, yes. <laughs> you know it already. Amen. Praise God. The reason is this. Kind words are like honey. Sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Wow. Ain't that something? Kind words are like honey. Sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Proverbs 16 and 24. So I encourage you to be just like this word right here. When you speak to people, speak a kind word to them. Give them something that they can really smile about. Give them something that they can share with others. Especially when they're going through something. Because you never know who's going through what. But if you're speaking kind words, and this is what should be in your heart anyway, amen? Kind words. The Bible also says that a kind word turns away wrath. You know? I tried that. I challenged that word once before. Someone had frown on their face, just always grumpy, crying, angry. But I kept speaking kind words to them. A soft answer is what it says in Proverbs. A soft answer turns away wrath. So when I had a conversation with a person and they was all grumpy, 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 I just kept speaking, you know, I kept smiling, number one, and I kept speaking to them nothing but kind words until they got quiet, real quiet. Didn't want to talk anymore. And that was okay. Because first of all, did I see a hand back there? No. So first of all, they weren't speaking nothing ill anymore. It wasn't any grumpiness. They just wasn't saying nothing because they didn't know how to process this thing that I'm giving them. They didn't know that I was shedding a little light on the situation here. You know, I just kept on speaking kind words. Kept on talking about how good God is. But what I didn't do, I didn't beat them up with the Bible. I didn't smack them around with the word of God. I gave them the word in kind in a kind way, in a gentle way, in a loving way. And that, that was able to break the monotony. Just break all that, you know, ill feelings up about anything. Later on, this is a true story, later on the person came to me, and this was some years later, and told me about that same situation. Said, you know, I didn't understand why you was saying what you were saying, even though I wasn't trying to hear it. I said, well, praise the Lord. You know, I'm just doing what I know how to do. You know, I, I ain't got no, I, ain't, I don't have anything against you. In fact, I love you. And the person says, you know what? I understand now, and I receive it. I said, well, praise God. Now, understand this. You may not see something happen right away, but you just keep sowing them seeds. Keep speaking the word of God. Keep speaking kind and loving words. You're, you're sowing a seed. Somebody else will come around and water that seed. And God will give the increase. Amen. Amen. You know, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, mm -hmm. 19 to 21, the middle translation. <clears> 2 <throat> Corinthians 5, 19 to 21. And it says, For God was in Christ, Reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. Amen. And that's what a lot of people do, right? 
down here in the street counting everybody. We just drove past a bunch of parents and out on the streets handing out handing out flyers and everything else, talking about <laughs> slavery and all. We just passed these Pharisees, right? It says, this is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. We are Christ's ambassadors and God is using us to speak to you. We urge you as though Christ himself were here pleading with you. Be reconciled to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins and that we to be made right with God through Christ. So the message that we're supposed to give is this wonderful message of grace. Amen. This message that will reconcile people to God. And what, we're, and what religion does is scares people from God. Mm -hmm. Instead of loving the hell out of people, they're scaring the hell out of people. <laughs> and so people, and what's happening is, you know, people are, don't want to go to church. Because everything they, you know, they heard, and, and they feel judged, they feel condemned, they feel beat up. But the scripture here, Paul has explained to us that it is our job to reconcile people to Christ. Amen. How do you reconcile people to God when you tell them they're going to hell? You're not reconciling no, but in fact, you told them they're going the other way. That is not reconciling somebody to God. Amen. And that was the whole, that's, that is a part of our, our mission. Our mission. And we have to get on top of that. The only way we can do that is by speaking a kind word, speaking an encouraging word, speaking grace, Amen. speaking love, because love love is in grace. You know what I mean? You, in order for us to, to, to draw something, you know, I was in the military, my NCO style, my wife knew my NCO style, right? My NCO style was, I was the polite guy. I was the one smiling. I, I like to you know, get involved with my soldiers. I like to have fun, you know what I'm saying? When they work, I, I get in there and work with them unless I have to go do something else, you know what I mean? And the thing about that was, you can always draw more flies with honey mm -hmm. than you'll ever draw with vinegar. And they used to, some of the NCOs would be like, man, what do you mean by that? Say, hey, you treat your soldiers like they are your servants, and they ain't gonna like it. They never want to work with you. They never want anything to really do with you. If it wasn't for the fact they had to be here, they wouldn't be here. I said, but I don't even have to show up. My soldiers want to be here. Amen. So it's, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And that's how we're supposed to be reconciling people back to God. We're supposed to be speaking a word that's going to make God structures to them. Right, you exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, we ain't got to lie to them about God, no. I mean, this whole thing right here, when he says no longer common people stands against them, that's enough for me Amen. right there. Amen. I mean, what else do we need to add? You Amen. know what I mean? So, but the message, the message of religion will never be to no longer count people's sins against them. Religion always starts off with sin. With sin. It always starts off with sin. Amen. Evangelist and then the Don't be letting the pastor speak before me, because he's saying what I'm about to say <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> but this is so good. Um, as you were Speaking, and you keep saying making a conscious to speak, a conscious decision to speak the word of God. Who is the word of God? Amen. Who Jesus is the word of is God? The word of Jesus God. is the word of God. So you speak Jesus. When you speak that's Jesus, it. what do you speak? Life. That's it. That's it. When you speak Jesus, what do you speak? Healing. That's it. When you speak Jesus, what do you speak? Love. When you speak Jesus, you speak kindness. You speak uh, salvation. You speak redemption. You speak all of those things when you speak Jesus. We will, should never forget that the word of God is Jesus. Amen. John 1 and 14. Amen. Our Savior. Our salvation. Our reconciliation. Like he was just saying. That's all Jesus. So when, when you're speaking to people and you're making a conscious decision to speak the word of God. When you're giving them Jesus. Amen. There can be nothing else but love. Amen. Because Jesus himself is love. Amen. Amen. You're so right. Go ahead, Deacons. Again, this is really good. You know, um, piggyback off what everybody else has mentioned. You know, I love the fact that we do our welcome song here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that is a constant decision for us to do. Mm -hmm. To welcome them. Amen. Show them love, you know. And to see the expression on their face. Some go numb. Some cry and some smile so hard, like you know, me. You know they love me, and so 
they gonna go and share that. Amen. Because like you mentioned earlier, um, how you were showing love to someone and, and speaking a word, how uh, the beginning they was kind of puzzled, but it took some time for them to come back and realize, well, over the time and realize that, you know, wow, they were speaking kind, kind words to me, showing the love of God. Going back to us, as one, a constant decision, singing a, the sweet melodies to our guests who become family. Amen. This is really good. Amen, amen, you're right. Go ahead, Tom. Who watching the bees not saying my name, sir? But just say. <laughs> Amen. Uh, this is good. <laughs> when Gwen spoke about how we've made a conscious decision to sing a welcome song, not just to sing the welcome song, but to truly mean it. Yes. With yes. love, love right? Love doing it. And it always makes me think of um, Maria, my coworker. When I first met her, she's so helpful and she's so sweet. And we had gone to lunch my first day of work and you know talking about your life and she was like, Oh, I'm divorced and she had her head down in shame and I was like, Oh, well, I'm separated on my way, what's going on? Like, hey, why is what's what's this? You know, so she goes on to explain to me how, you know, in her church, you know, you're pretty much your cat, wow, why don't you get divorced? And I was like, Okay, so of all the things on earth that you could do, divorce, they're gonna show you from the church. But I let that go because you know, again, that's not my religion. So they came here a few years ago, um, and for me, the takeaway was so beautiful was with Felipe. Felipe doesn't speak English, but he understood that there was love in the welcome song, and yes. he was so yes, overjoyed. Yes. And like the whole time they were here, he kept crying, and Maria's crying, and so when I got to work, she shared it with me, and she was like, I just, Jelani, there was just so much love. And I was like, well, you know, God is love. Like, at the end of the day, that God is love. And who are we to talk of? He's not talking about just saying, we don't care. I don't care. Like I told you before, you know, remember how you first met me and what you said. You know, I said, and we've been cool because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. All I know is I love you. You love me. We're great. But Maria has made a conscious decision to stay under that religion, mm. to stay bound mm. in that religion. She has no anything else but she recognizes genuine love when she sees it but she's made a conscious decision to stay there i choose to love her still we're still we're still good friends you know at work i talk to her every day but i recognize that she's made a conscious decision to stay there in that that bondage Um, I remember when um, I thought that I had committed this awful sin, and because <laughs> um, I told God, I said, I don't love you, I you, and then so I, I had to go because it was falling my conscience. So I had to go to the pastor and says, am I going to go to hell, you know, because I said that. So I remember him telling me that I was going to go to hell. So I did walk around. Not this pastor. Right, no, no. <laughs> clarify. <laughs> I did go around with um, feeling like I was going to go to hell. And, and I was thinking, of what is, why am I walking this walk? So, um, yeah, it, it did bother me. It bothered my conscience. It kept, it's like I couldn't think of the, the, the word of God. I just couldn't bring all the scriptures back to my mind because of what he said. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, man, and I, I see you. Matter of fact, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Uh, again, it takes us back to being uh, the word that Elder Locke uses a lot, institutionalized. Amen. And people get so institutionalized and caught up on their tradition that they, they're afraid to break it because they feel if they break it, they're going to be lost. But the problem is a lot of times they're already lost and they're looking to be found. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because Jesus ain't lost, so he, they can't find Jesus. Right, right, Jesus right, ain't right. lost. They're looking to be found. And even when, when Jesus presents himself, his, himself to them, they're so caught up on the institution that they go back into that institution because that's all they know. That's all they know. 
And they're not being, and when you're not taught the truth, and you live it off of all you know, it causes problems. That's why even today, again, a lot of people are passing down tradition, and some of the pastors honestly didn't have no more than sixth grade uh, education. And they were just passing things down, passing things down, and people just kept passing down what Pastor Sunset said, said, what Bishop Sunset said, said, and then you hear all this stuff in the church about God helps them to help themselves. Please. And then you find out all, you know, and then years later you find out because with your educated mind that Benjamin Franklin said that, and that's not in the Bible. No, right. But guess what? Great great granddaddy didn't know that because he only had a sixth grade education. Was it? Amen. Amen. That is very good. I, I like what everyone was saying, you know, and Evangelist said something first that I really want to talk about, you know, it's like God is love. Jesus is love. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is love. You know, Jesus is a whole lot of things. Matter of fact, Jesus is everything to us. Everything good to us. Amen. Spirit. You know, amen, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, so when we speak, if you could just convince somebody, I mean, matter of fact, you don't even have to try hard to convince them. Just keep speaking Jesus. Amen. Now, one or two things are going to happen. Either they're going to get tired, they don't want to hear it no more, they're going to leave you, or they're going to really understand that, hey, your life is for Christ. And you're speaking God's word. You're speaking life into them. You know, it is so good if you could just really, when someone is having a bad day or something was said to them that they that someone hurt them or they was puzzled about, and you can actually shed some light on that situation by way of Jesus Christ saying, you know, listen, I understand what you're going through. Been there, done that. But God. But God. He loved me so much. And he has no respect to person, so he loves you the same. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is trust him. Give your situation over him. The Bible says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. That is speaking the word of God mm -hmm. into someone's life. And then, not only just speaking to show them. Show them. I see you, sir. Show them. You have devices. You got a cell phone? You can show them. You got a Bible app? You can pull it up. It's funny now because a lot of times Siri and who the other? Alexa. Alexa or whoever. You, you can just speak and say, hey, what does this mean? And then a scripture will come uh -huh, up. They know it too. Amen? A scripture will come up. And you're shedding, you're speaking the word of God. And you're showing them the word of God. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, sir. And when you speak the word of God, be conscious of who you're talking to. Yes. Well, what do I mean by this? Listen, you can't speak King James <laughs> to somebody who's a, a baby in Christ. A person who's just coming in and wanting to say, you can't speak King James. So, and, and I'm just going to use what you just said for an example. God is going to respect the person. They don't have a clue what that they is. Don't. But they if don't. you say that God doesn't show favoritism, they they'll understand that. Amen. Bring so it to the we, have to, we have to bring it, when we bring it to them, we have to bring it to them in a way where they can understand. Amen. Because that's the only way they'll be able to apply it. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Amen. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. You know. Conventional oven. <laughs> Amen. But this is, that is so good. And, you know, if, if you don't know nothing else, if you don't know nothing else, you know God is love. If you don't know nothing else about the Bible, you know God is love. Amen. But because you know that God is love and you know what he did, through his loving us, you should be able, I mean, it, it should make you want to learn more of him and his love and his grace and his mercy. Hunger and thirst. You should want to hunger and thirst after his righteousness. After his righteousness. Just like Psalms say, as a deer panteth after the water, you panteth after the word of God. You know, because it's so good. Pastor, I mean, Elder always say, oh, come taste and see. How good God is. That's in the word of God. Amen. It's funny how. I'm, I'm sitting here. And I'm looking back over my life. And the things that I say on a regular basis. And most of them are. are quoting scriptures. Most of them are quoting scriptures. 
but I'm speaking to people, 99% of my conversation you can find in the scriptures. Now, I'm not speaking King James to nobody. No, I'm not. But I can spread love through the word of God in a regular conversation where they can understand it. And they'll know that I'm pointing them to Christ. Amen? I am directing them to Christ because I, I love what is being put in me, what I'm taking in from the word of God because more word in means more word out. The Bible says what's in a man will come out of a man. Where the hell? Again, this is really good. You know, I sit here and <laughs> when I think about what happened in June versus right now and how God has there's this is a new Gwen. See the old Gwen used to be she used to allow fear to come up about different things and when we would go on a, a events and I'd be like, Don't take don't let me be the driver and we're going over this and you know, this high bridge and waters and things and stuff. Where now the new Gwen, because I have made that conscious decision to trust, not saying I didn't trust in God, but I trust God more now. Amen. I trust God more now, you know. And once I get off things, I'll be like, I laugh. I'll be like, God I must have lost my mind, but I know you got me. <laughs> and it's a constant decision that I've made. And so, um, piggyback off of what uh, um, our sister Jay over there had mentioned about how the young lady loved receiving what we offer her. But she's allowing herself to be caught up in that bondage because of fear. But you know, you're sowing that mighty seed where she's, you know how someone is eating something, but they got the eye and they just sit up eating, but they, you know, got the eye and the carrots and stuff. So she's gonna come around. She's just taking her time because of the fear. But because of Miss Lady J over there, She's gonna, she's gonna come and she's gonna be so happy and she's gonna be, guess what, guess what, guess what? And she's gonna be like, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Just keep watering it, keep watering it, keep watering it, keep watering it. And she's coming, she's coming. She's amen. coming sooner than we think. Amen, amen, you know, and the thing about it is, uh, we're gonna go back to this institutionalized word here, you know, because people, I, I remember, matter of fact, let me bring this around today. I could be sitting at the table with my wife eating a meal, and we got the same amount of food on our plate, so I may even have a little bit more. But I eat fast. <laughs> and my wife will often, oftentimes apologize, well, I'm sorry, I can't eat that. I said, don't do like me. I eat fast. I'm still institutionalized on the military. <laughs> <laughs> no. You had a certain amount of time to eat your meal and get up out of here and get back in formation. So, I see you. So, uh, that's being institutionalized. I have not broken that cycle. I have not slowed down to chew my food to digest it properly. Military condition. Thank you, military. But one day, I tried. I was chewing slow. And I, matter of fact, she finished before me this time. And she said, wow, I must have been hungry. No, I was just trying to eat slow. <laughs> and I went right back to being institutionalized, so I still eat fast. That's just me. I mean, I'm a work in progress. Amen. God still loves me. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Jake. But you institutionalize military eaters. The rest of us are just in shock trying to understand how y'all ain't choking while you eating your food. That's why we get so. However, when you said, when y'all use the word institutionalized and institutionalized thinking, brought me to mind of how um, in December I had, um, I went to Florida to visit my family. And I flew there and flew back. And honestly, it was the first time I'd ever traveled by myself. Mm. And so, initially I was like, well, you know, I'm going. And then the day of, it was like, oh, I'm going to go to the airport by myself, be in the airport by myself, you know, by myself, by myself. And so then after I'm all coming home, and I was like, you know, that just really wasn't so bad. You know, not bad at all. 
And um, when I had to go back so soon earlier this year, or a month or so ago, as I was tra traveling there, I was like, you know, this really ain't bad. Driving by yourself, I don't have to worry about, you know, somebody telling me I'm walking too slow, you know, I need to be over here. I don't have to worry about leaving somebody, going over there. But it also gives me the opportunity to get to meet new people. Y'all know I talk to anybody. So it was cool to just sit down and talk to these newlyweds, or they were about to get married, this older lady who had never been to Texas. And so I was like, you know, God, you're right. I don't need a mate to travel. I don't need a friend to travel with, just you and me. We can do this. Mm -hmm. and, um, and for me, it was making a conscious decision to say, I'm not going to, to, to say that I'm going to stop living and experiencing things because I feel that I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. And so when y'all said institutionalized, for me, I was institutionalized in my thinking that I can't do this or that because I'm by myself. I can't go here or there because I'm by myself. I don't want to be around those people because I'm by myself. That's an institutionalized thinking. However, I made a conscious decision to no longer think that way. For me, it's I'm moving. I'm, um, I have liberties to come and go as I please, do as I want, enjoy things the way that I want. And I have to be concerned with how others enjoy them because it's, it's me, it's my season. And that's making a conscious decision to say, God, I'm okay with this season right here. Amen. You had a renewed mind. Amen. You had a renewed mind, you know, and I thank God for that because, like you said, it broke the institutionalized thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, after you consciously and, and intentionally, you know, did some thinking about what the situation was. You was able to, you was able to, uh, you know, excuse me while I say that. Amen. You was able to live. You was able to live. You know, it's funny how um, the Philippians 4, 8, and 9, 4, 8. Amen. Now, amen. And that's Philippians 4, 8. Amen. And it says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, what are your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable? Okay, and admirable. Think about these, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Amen. So, we need to fix our thoughts, our minds on good things, loving things, caring, you know, all everything that's good, positive. See, because that's all about God. Amen. It's all about God. Everything that's good is of God. Everything that's lovely is of God. This is the way we need to fix our minds, our thoughts. Because he, the Bible also says, so is a man thinking, so is he. And you got to remember, your thought process, what's in your head, you start thinking, you're going to start speaking it. You're going to start speaking it. Go ahead, Pastor, before I move. And a lot of times that's where the problem lay. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at life and the word that they use is optimist, you're, you're optimistic or you're pessimistic. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to look at things in a way, and a lot of, when, it, when we say pessimistic, okay, when you look at something, you look at that bottle, all you see is, oh, that bottle is, is mostly empty. <laughs> you know, that's all you see. So you always feel like you don't have enough to do anything. But an optimistic person say, hey, wait a minute, I got a little bit there. I, I, I can do something. You know, I can do something with that. I may be able to do, do this or do that. You know, mm -hmm. a pessimist person would be like, oh, man, I'm not playing the lottery because the odds are like 1 to 23 billion thousand to whatever, right? <laughs> and whereas the other one would say, well, let's see. The odds are 23, 23 billion something to one? So you tell me I got a chance? I'm that one. I'm that one. 
That's how you see yourself. That's, that's, that's how we're supposed to be. If we got the favor of God on our lives, Amen. we're supposed to see everything out of the, God, out of the same eyes that Jesus saw. Amen. Amen. And when we look at life, we should be looking at life as, hey, there's something good happening. Hey, there's something wonderful happening. Hey, every day that I wake up, hey, it's another victory. Amen. I've won. Amen. You know, you, every time you get up, you've won. Amen. You know what I mean? You're not in the grave. You didn't, you know, you, you won. They you got a whole other day things. to go. But people don't see like that way. And in the church, and it's sad to say, but religion has taught in the church, people have to be pessimistic. You know? Don't, you don't, 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 how they say, don't get your hopes up too high. Come you don't want to get disappointed. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's the type of stuff that, the, that's, the Bible here, the scripture tells you that the blessings of him are yea and amen. And amen right? And yes. I stick with that. Amen. Amen. You'd be like, oh, no, you know, I don't think no, I don't think God's gonna do all that because you know I'm I'm not that important or I'm just they don't see themselves the way God sees them. And so they well, I'm unworthy, I'm this or I'm not that or I'm inferior. And it causes them to live exactly just like you said, as a man thinking. So it's he. And it causes them to become what they think. Mm -hmm. Amen. I see you real quick, Elder. And you know, it's funny you say that because religion will teach something this way. The Bible says, <clears throat> you should not think more highly of yourself than you ought. Huh. But they want you to not think of yourself as being worthy or as being great. You know, now, now I, I want to explain this to you because see, this is what the mix up is. You ought not to be bragging and boastful about anything. God don't want you to be conceited. He don't want you to, you know, um, uh, act like you got power over someone because of your education or because of your position. Don't be walking around with your chest all puffed out because God blessed you with something that you wasn't even deserving of. Or should I say, you didn't earn. Amen? I'll put it that way. You didn't earn it. It was given to you by grace and love. But you walking around like you did something to get it. That's what God don't want you to do. Amen? Amen? I have to clear that up, clear the air, because religion will never clear the air for you that way. Why? Because you got too many people in the pulpit with their chest poked out, thinking about, well, you know, I've been to seminary, and I've been to, okay, you've been to cemetery. So what? Amen. Go ahead, Elder. This is. Hey man, I I had just wanted to uh, correct something that you had said earlier when you was like uh, everything that's good is from God, but the one thing we got to realize is it's the other way around. Everything of God is good. Amen. Because it's not everything that's good is of God that's true. and stuff. And so and we got to realize that. that everything that God does and everything that's from God is what is good. Amen. I'm glad you, thank you for bringing it back around because I myself even preached a message about we, listen, our good ain't always God. God is always good, but our good ain't always God. We got good intentions, but it may not be God's intention. Amen. So go ahead, sis. Thank you, Elder. The other day I was um, scrolling through Facebook and um, an old uh, pastor of mine had posted on her page. She said, if you keep being disappointed by people, then maybe you should lower your standards. And I was like, huh? So I kept going, but then I had to go back because I was like, wait, what? And I'll be honest, today I'm still kind of like, wait, what? Because um, I don't know, like, I don't know how to feel about that statement. Of course, you can comment because I wasn't going to do that. But I, I, don't, I didn't really understand that. Like, if you keep being disappointed by people, then maybe you should lower your standards. 
Facebook. Huh? But she posted on her Facebook, so on my page. The webinar conversation we were having, this is something that she, you know, posted on her Facebook page. Because her friends, I, you know, I saw it, and I was just kind of like, what? But I guess. I don't know. It's, it's weird. So I was like, I'm into that. I was going to bring it up because I'm like, I need some help digesting because it doesn't make sense to me that it, true, I guess our faith is not in man, it's in God. I get that part. But to tell the people you're disappointed in the, the lower your standards, like, God's people are great. I'm confused. Yeah, she's confused. Um, however, oh. pay no attention to that statement. I'll just put it that way. Pay no attention to that statement because that is not something that God will want you to do. Amen. God made you fearfully one. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. God made you exactly the way He wants you to be, and there is somebody for you. Amen. And until you are presented by God to that person, you just keep on loving God. <laughs> um, I should say I did not take it in that way. I in that way because i didn't think that it was to me but honestly it was a statement that she made yeah. but I, where my confusion came in is that we're talking about god's people and everyone is strictly wonderfully made so to say you should lower your standards that's speaking i don't know like it's speaking and you know, i'm struggling with that I look at it, why do we have to lower our standard? Because God doesn't want us to lower our standards. And I look at it like we have a conscious decision, you know, she mentioned that um, uh, disappointment. Again, we have that that choice to be bothered with them or not. I look at it, everything is a season, mm -hmm. including people. No matter who they are, they're a season. And if I'm, if I'm being, it's, it's up to me whether I want to constantly deal with that person because I'm being disappointed at all times, then okay, it's up to me whether I want to receive it. Because I, I you know, God is love, he's patient, mm -hmm. he's kind, he's not evil or anything. So it's up to me whether I want to uh, put myself in that type of environment so I can start acting like them. You know, um, people say and do things that we don't like all the time. In one ear, not the other. And and to say that to lower a standard, then that means that, okay, you, not not personally, but people overall general, oh, you must lower your standard in order in order for them to accept you. No, not at all. Not at all. You're going to walk with me like a man. No, God Ain't wants me to go higher and higher and higher and higher, and I'm not going to lower my standards in order for this person to uh, talk to me, like me, or even appreciate me. Amen. Pastor Jason? Yeah. You know, and I can understand certain things. Like, okay, for instance, if a person is critical of everybody, and critical of everything, okay, that's, that's, that's again, that goes back to that scripture that you just got from somebody. You shouldn't think higher, higher of yourself, yourself than you are. Than what you actually are. Because you're critical of everybody, that means you're critical of yourself too. And so, if nothing was good enough for you, then nothing was good enough. Period. And and it takes us back to uh, a study that Shan gave about letting perfection steal your peace. That's it. That's it. And if you are, if you are that person, and you're looking for some type of perfection. Well, I, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with it. Because everybody's definition of perfection is different. Exactly. And so by, by seeking out perfection, you will never, ever have peace. And you'll never be able to settle. Just like I talked about the other day, God uses those who, who are at rest. He uses those who are at peace. I told the man of integrity just yesterday, and I'm going to let John know today. Me and my wife talked about it. Why didn't God use David to build the temple? <laughs> he didn't use David to build the temple because David was a man of war. He spilled so much blood. 
And he told that he was going to use his son, Solomon, to build the temple. Mm -hmm. Solomon's name in the Hebrew is Shalom, Shaloma. Shaloma. Shaloma means the same thing as Shalom, peace. God was waiting on a person who was at rest to build the temple. Amen. Now, in your life, in our lives, if we're looking to improve or get anywhere in our lives, we need to get to the point of rest. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. And we can't be always in conflict. We can't always be uh, critical of everybody else. There you go. Because if we're too critical, well then, yeah, peace will always, perfection will always still be your peace. Amen. 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 So it, it, can, it can go both ways. You know? Amen. Just got to know how to understand it. Exactly. Amen. It's so good Pastor went there because that's exactly where I was going. Mm -hmm. I was like, what it means is <laughs> if you allow a religion to make you constantly look at people every day critical, critical right. and have an expectation of who they should be, then you're going to be disappointed every day. Exactly. When you stop allowing religion and your judgment of people and they come to them with Christ, with the word of God, then just as Jesus, you will go with the drunks. You will go out into the clubs. You will go and meet them exactly where they're at. Because when Jesus came to save us, you think he was disappointed in us? No. Nope. Guess what he had to do? Lower his standards. Mm. He had to come exactly where we he are. Where we he are. came to where we are to elevate us to where he is. Amen. But he can't come to us in an expectation. We're going to always let him down. And that's exactly what that meant. Amen. 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 That's good. I'm, I'm going to say that we know that um, religion will try to hold you to a certain expectation. Yeah, make you feel like you're perfect. Make you feel like you've got to achieve perfection. And this is when people are now feeling like they are not worthy. Because they have not met the expectation of bishop, doctor, brain, or whoever. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't meet up to his his expectation. I can't I, I can't dress right. So that's why people don't come to church. I ain't got no church clothes. That's it. Go ahead. I will say that the person that posted that though, being a per a person of God, a true person of God, you don't put things out for confusion. You put something out there to also explain it. Because there was a word in it. But you have to make sure that you're in all of it, you get it. Everybody is able to get an Amen. understanding. Amen. 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 So you like that? Go ahead. I love the way Evangelist just broke it down. Mm -hmm. So everyone, and I like the fact that we're on the air. So everyone can get an understanding of it. So like you said, she put it out there, or whoever puts it out there, that explain it so everyone can get that understanding of it. So there won't be any, you know, misunderstanding. Amen. I, I, I like that. I like that. It took it back to what you said Sorry. It took it back to what you said when you first started. It was a preach too. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It was a preaching too and not a teaching. And you started off saying that in the beginning of tonight. Amen, amen. It's funny that we went right back around and watched this. Colossians 4 and 6 in the NLT. Colossians 4 and 6, NLT. <laughs> amen. Amen. Is everybody there? No. That's Colossians 4, verse 6 in the NLT, New Living Translation. Amen. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Amen. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Amen. You can't go wrong when you are when your conversation is gracious, meaning in love. And attractive meaning that it will draw, amen, to everyone. So, just, I'm going to take this this uh, conversation that we were just talking about that was put out there. 
There was a word in it, as Evangelist said, as Pastor mentioned. There was a word in there, but it had to be attractive to the viewer or the listener. So if it was put out there and explained properly, explained properly, then people could understand what this, the person that put it out there was saying and receive it in love. Amen. Go ahead, I just wanted to read what you read in the message because it says, um, "Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in a conversation, not put them down and not cut them out." Amen. 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 Go ahead, Pastor. That's, I didn't even read the message, but that's what I wanted to go to. You know, because this 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 piece here. Is that talking about listen? You can treat people with love, and they can still get offended. True. Is that your fault? No. No. It's just they didn't get an understanding for some odd reason, and that's the whole thing. If you can put something out like that, put it out on Facebook again. That's like speaking King James mm -hmm. when people need to hear English. Amen. You know, so we have to explain. You're right. Everything needs to be explained. I mean, when you put something out there, even the word of the day that we put out every day, we put it out. We have to do scripture, and then we explain. Exactly. You know, and then those get the emails, then we pray. You know? Amen. And that's the thing about it. you got to explain it. You just can't just go, again, preaching, the difference between preaching and teaching. Amen. Amen. You know, there is so much that um, in this word, this word has everything that we need to have a prosperous life to have a loving life, everything we need. There's even correction in this word, mm -hmm. but the correction is given in love. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, whom the Father love, he corrects. Mm -hmm. But if you can't receive his correction in love, then you may not have the right relationship. Your relationship dictates how you receive your correction. I see you, Elder. So I pray today that even those that are online that are hearing these words, learn how to receive everything in love from the word of God. And you'll learn how to receive correction, whether it's coming from the mouth of a man, because God uses man to get his word out. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Elder. Hey Amen. I, I like the last part of the message where uh, Sister John was reading, because it says the goal is to bring out the best in others in the conversation, not put them down or cut them out. Religion push you down and cut you out. Religion sends you out worse than how you came in. Religion singles you out. Religion shows you your faults. Religion shows you your flaws and cuts you off. And not even realizing by you trying to keep them out of heaven, you're keeping yourself out. They're, they're keeping themselves out. And, and, spreading, and spreading religion instead of spreading the word of setting them free. Because, like I said, you you can't you can't serve two masters. You either love one and you hate, hate the other. other. You're right. Something. So you, you can't be you can't say that you for grace, but give law. Come on now. We, we know about if, that. If, if you if you for Christ, then you're about grace. If you're for Christ, you're not about law. You're not about judgment. You're not about condemnation. You're about love. Amen. If you're for Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I hope everyone has gotten a clear understanding on what was being said tonight um, and making a conscious decision to speak the word of God just know that if you're speaking love you're speaking the word of God when you're speaking love you're speaking the word of God now to increase that love you just need a little more study time a little more time with God a little more understanding so be in place so with that being said, we're going to end this for tonight. I want you to know that those that are online, please, if you're local, we ask time and time again to come out and join this corporate anointing. Here, we are no judgment zone. And also, when the sun is set free, is free indeed. We're here to love on you, love hard on you, and hope to see you soon. God bless and have a wonderful night.